Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about portlets, what they are, how do they work, and why does this even matter in the grand scheme of things. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting off with the important question, why do portlets matter? Now, many of LifeRay's applications are built using the MVC design pattern, model, view, and controller. The portlet aspect accounts for two thirds of that. So portlets account for the controller and the view of an application when using MVC. Many of our applications that we are going to be creating in the LifeRay ecosystem also use this portlet aspect. Now, not every application within the LifeRay world is built using a portlet. And in fact, many applications can be built in a number of different ways, but the vast majority of our applications that we'll see in LifeRay out of the box are built using portlets. So again, at the very least, it's a good idea to gain an understanding of how portlets work if we ever want to modify or extend the applications that come with LifeRay. So let's talk about what are portlets. So portlets are applications, web applications specifically, that produce an HTML fragment on a page. This portlet will run inside of a portlet container. So very similarly how OSGI bundles run inside OSGI containers, portlets will run within a portlet container and the portlet and OSGI container do work together. So they don't um, conflict with one another. Again, a lot of what we see on the UI side of LifeRay is thanks in part to portlets. Portlets in and of themselves are nothing that's LifeRay specific. In fact, there are a couple of different portlet specifications that decide or govern how these portlets work. Right now we're at the JSR 362, but a lot of what we're going to be talking about is the JSR 286. So how do portlets kind of work? Now on the UI side, we might have a page within LifeRay and on that page, we can have a number of different portlets. Each one of these portlets might be doing something a little bit differently. We'll be interacting with those portlets as end users. And as we do, requests are sent over to the portlet container. And then with that type of request, the portlet container will then decide what to do, whether to maybe refresh or maybe we'll call a service. Uh, we'll be discussing that in a little bit. The main idea is on the UI side, a user will see a number of portlets on the page. They interact with that portlet and in doing so requests are sent to the portlet container and then a response is going to come back. And so as we're interacting with these portlets, these portlets can be doing things in the LifeRay world, calling LifeRay services. Maybe we're making a call to get something from a LifeRay database, or maybe we're searching for something within LifeRay search index. So our portlets can be interacting inside of the LifeRay ecosphere or a portlet can also be making external service calls. They can be making rest calls, soap calls, uh, and so on. Now portlets on the page, if you've interacted with LifeRay before, right, they look like what you see here on the screen. Now in the UI side, we call these portlets widgets, but here in the back end, we typically will refer to them as portlets or portlet components. So just keep that in distinction in mind. On the UI side, we call them widgets. Now these portlets also make up a lot of what we see on the menus within LifeRay. In this example here, we're inside of the web content section of the site administration here within LifeRay, and that is its own portlet. So it might look like it's part of the page or the whole page when in fact it is a portlet. So portlets do play a very, very strong role within the UI of LifeRay. When we're creating a Java standard portlet, there are a couple of files that are very important. So the two big important files within a Java standard portlet is going to be these descriptor files. We have a web.xml and a portlet.xml. The portlet.xml is the one that when dealing with Java standard portlets is the one that we're more interested in. Within a Java standard portlet, we also have a portlet class and we can also have a number of classes that may follow. And we have a number of JSP files. These JSPs are what's used to display things through the portlet. Now, I emphasize a lot that this is a Java standard portlet. We're learning kind of the basics or the anatomy of the Java standard. But once we move over to the LifeRay world, things might shift a little bit. So keep that in mind. A lot of the fundamentals will be here, but the way that they're expressed might be a little bit different. 
When we're talking about the key concepts, there's going to be five. We're going to be talking about these throughout the next series of videos. The most important is the portlet life cycle. How does a portlet work? How does it function? How do we get from one portlet life cycle to another? This is what we're going to be discussing soon. Portlet modes are different ways in which we can display different points of view or different views in general using these things called portlet modes. A window state defines what the portlet looks like, whether it takes up the whole page, or maybe it takes up a portion of the page, or maybe it's minimized. Interportlet communication describes how portlets can talk to each other. And then events is another way in which portlets are able to talk to each other as well as trigger some other uh, types of calls. So these are going to be the five main concepts that we're going to be going through in the next series of videos. But until then, I will see you in the next video.